right now from KTAB News, your local election headquarters. This is Big Country Politics. Thanks so much for being here for Big Country Politics. I'm Travis Ruiz, and we do start our broadcast with news out of Taylor County. Would double time be enough of an, ascent, an incentive for you to work more than 80 hours in a week in a stressful environment? That's the question facing the understaffed Taylor County Sheriff's Office. KTAP's Tyler Henderson heard the story when he spoke exclusively with Sheriff Ricky Bishop about keeping his officers motivated. Understaffed and overworked, the Taylor County Sheriff's Office is down 35 officers. Well, they're getting burned out. Finding willing officers has been a struggle, especially when the salaries have been so low. It's hard trying to find qualified people that, uh, one, want the job um, and are willing to come in and work when they can sit at home unemployed and make more money sometimes, just collecting unemployment. However, Sheriff Ricky Bishop and the Taylor County Commissioner's Court have been working to get salaries raised and have incentives in place to stop the bleeding. For law enforcement, you do not get overtime pay until you work 86 hours. So, um, and, that, and that's uh, under the federal labor laws. So we, uh, I've got the commissioners to temporarily waive that down to 80. And instead of time and a half pay for overtime, we're up. Uh, got them to approve uh, double time pay. But because of the officer shortage, that has forced the sheriff's office and jail to make a financially tough decision, moving 100 inmates to Burnett County Jail. Now they charge us $54 a day per inmate uh, to keep them there, so you're $5,400 a day. Which could turn into a long-term financial burden. Over a one-year time frame, we're looking at approximately $1.9 million. But an increase in pay could make the high stress of the job more tolerable and could potentially bring in more officers. In Abilene, with coverage you can count on, Tyler Henderson, KTAB News. Tyler, thank you. The starting wage at the Taylor County Jail is around $17 an hour and double time pay for those extra hours brings that close to 35 bucks an hour. Moving now to our eye on Abilene. You know that it's pretty generally said that we'll never have enough water in West Texas. And back in 2005, there was a serious conversation about adding a fifth water source for the city of Abilene. It was a major crusade by former Mayor Norm Archibald. Now current Mayor Anthony Williams says plans for that fifth source have been revised. KTAB's Miriam Chamberlain was there to speak with the mayor. Mayor Anthony Williams, in attendance at the Kiwanis Club meeting, speaks on the future of Abilene's water sources and gave an update on the proposed reservoir that would be Abilene's fifth water source. Personally, um, I think it's, it's doubtful that we develop Cedar Ridge um, because we have enough water the mayor speaking of the other four sources of water for Abilene, Fort Phantom, Hubbard, OH Ivy, and Possum Kingdom Lake. The plan for the proposed Cedar Ridge was to flood more than 6,500 acres of land north of Abilene at a cost of about $400 million. The mayor says on average, Abilene uses about 22 million gallons of water a day. If Abilene can illustrate that we have enough water for the next 50 to 70 years, it means we have an opportunity for additional um, opportunity for investment in our community. And wants to put that money elsewhere. We have an agreement with Clayton Williams holding uh, of some groundwater in far, far west Texas. Um, before that agreement, Allen was the largest city in the state uh, not to have groundwater in its portfolio. There is also a plan to take more water out of Lake Ivy, one of Abilene's four water sources. If Abilene needs water, we're going to take Midland's take out of Ivy. City Council has not made a final decision on Cedar Ridge Reservoir's development, but there's a vote coming up with four members needed to agree. In Abilene, what coverage you can count on, Miriam Chamberlain, KTAP News. All right, Miriam, thank you. And the mayor says by this fall, a formal plan for future city water sources will be announced. Staying in Abilene, three Abilene police officers have been promoted. One of them is now an assistant chief. KTAP's Noah McKinney was at the promotion ceremony and learned what the officers believe it means to wear that badge. Lieutenant Craig Jordan and officers Andrew Mason and Matt Armister were recently promoted in the ranks of the Abilene Police Department, with their new titles being Assistant Chief Craig Jordan, Sergeant Andrew Mason, 
Assistant Chief Jordan has been with the department for 23 years in various capacities, which will serve him well in his new position over major and special investigations. I've spent about two-thirds of my career in investigations, so being able to stay involved in that and be over investigations is exciting and I'm looking forward to it. Sergeant Mason spent his last three years in the traffic division, but his new position has him overseeing patrol officers daily, which he says will be an adjustment. There's a balance there, I think, between uh, supervising your troops and also continuing to do police work. Both Mason and Jordan agree that the police community relationship in Abilene is fairly solid, and with Chief Dudley's push into the neighborhoods, that bond can hopefully grow. I look to continue being engaged with the community and building those relationships. Relationships built on understanding instead of intimidation. We're required to treat everyone with dignity and respect, even when we're using force against someone. Because force without restraint can lead to less than just outcomes. And the police profession is all about balance and um, justice with mercy. Both men stating that an honor such as this is one they do not take lightly. It's all about service um, and just your ability to connect with people on a real level because you see them at their worst. I'm excited for the opportunity to continue to serve the citizens of Abilene and the, the men and women of our police department. For BigCountryHomePage.com, I'm Noah McKinney. And at the same ceremony, several citizens and restaurants were recognized for keeping the department going during the February freeze. In order to keep APD fully functioning during the historic weather and outages, United Supermarkets providing pallets of water, Texas Freedom Off-Road and Abilene Wrecker Service responding to those stranded motorists, and restaurants like Taqueria Nuestra Mexicana provided free meals even though their own power and water were cut off. No matter the service provided, these Abilinians say it was an honor to be recognized, but they were only doing what a community should during hard times such as those. For them to give us a certifi like, certificate and for the police department to like, notice us, we did something good for them that it counts a lot for us. It's our community. We all live here. We want to take care of everybody. Um, if our community doesn't do well, then we don't do well. That's a great restaurant. Chief Dudley added that while the department will continue to serve, no matter what the conditions, the support and assistance of the Abilene community is very important, of course, in, during that time and navigating that difficult time. And when we come back here on Big Country Politics, an in-depth conversation with ICANN Executive 